It's been a good run, guys. This is the zombie killer. I think maybe Josh will be most stoked to see that. It's just going to the sidelines for a little bit. So I'm gonna shoot something long and sturdy and thick and accurate. And uh, today's a bow build and it's an exciting bow build because it's gonna be like a bow build you've never ever seen before. Josh Jones. What's up? He's our builder. He's an expert. He could literally build one of these in his sleep. So, we got some balloons. Balloons? You know what those are for? <laughs> Josh, here's my challenge to you. Okay. Can you build a bow in two hours? Yeah. Can you build a 100 yard bow in two hours? Ooh, that could be a challenge. <laughs> There we go, baby. <laughs> That's today's build. We got two hours. We're gonna set the clock. We're gonna get it rolling. We're gonna shoot a balloon from 100 yards over knot, and um, we're gonna build this thing. This is the, <laughs> tell them about it. Uh, this is a uh, Reckoning Gen 2 36 in a medium cam that uh, we're gonna run at 29 and a half inches for Timmy, 60 to 70 pounds, so we can still hunt it with it if you wanted. Stupid accurate at distance, and apparently we're gonna find out how quickly it can be accurate at distance. That's why you didn't wanna tell me. Yeah, oh Jesus! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Super sick. Uh, and for the for the guy that this guy that wants to learn and tune stuff, like no brainer. If you're giving me two hours, you need to not talk to me and let me go. <laughs> right, I know, and we got to film, and we're doing it for you. All right. So oh, here we go, baby. We're back on that road to 100K. I'd appreciate it so much if you subscribe and um, let's get to building. Let's go through the ingredient list. Hamski rest. Gas. Gas bow strings available on the website and for drop ship. These are the Ghost proprietary blend. So it has the least amount of pill. You can only get that in white or camo. If you're buying gas, buy one of those two. It's a better way to go. We're going super slick little bow set up here. Black and white, classic. A little different than my uh, more flamboyant bow. Over Garbage there. can bow. This thing's gonna be sleek. So let's get a build. Okay, so Epsilon Rest, uh, Podium Archer Stabes. Mm -hmm. 70 pounds, Reckoning 36, the master at work. Bow builds are too easy for him, you guys. They're just too easy. So I had to give him a little challenge. Oh, there we go. It's <laughs> a very creative idea, Tim. I'm not saying I like it. <laughs> uh, now, now I'm panicking. Give me a minute. <laughs> don't panic. If I got to make you hit something with it accurately at we distance in two that hours, that's not we a lot of time. That much time. We don't have that much time. <laughs> guys, this is my buddy Lou here. He's a good dog. Give me a high five for the people. One for the people. Good job. Good dog. How is um, bowstring installation on a Reckoning compared to what we did on the Facebook? Oh God, these are so easy and so fast. This is like really, really fast and really, really easy. So that's how long it takes to install such wow. strings. Yeah. And nothing blew up or broke. Ta-da. What are we, four minutes in? Yep. Cool. Strings. Strings are on. What's and next? Timing holes are pretty darn close, so that's about perfect. And we're fortunately, I think we're already set at the right length for you, so we don't have to do that. Okay. I'll put the rest on and get our position for our loop. And then put the loop on and then square it up. So you gotta loosen these up, take that plate out, bolt it onto the bracket for a universal mount. That is the nice thing about uh, the universal mount setup is if you end up getting a bow that it has the holes drilled in the back of the riser, that's all you bolt onto the back. Simple as that, you don't need the bracket. But Bowtex aren't doing that yet. But a couple manufacturers went ahead and did it this year. I wanna say PSE did it. You hit me flustered, man. Well, I, I, can, I gotta get this done in like 20 minutes, so we got an hour and 40 to get you to hit something. <laughs> Give me five minutes. I'm good, I'm good. Hey, I'm curious on you guys, like going to a little longer target bow, is that something you've thought about or messing with a longer riser bow? I didn't really think about it until I tried one and I was like, oh man, there's something going on here. So if you haven't thought about it, I'd encourage you to at least put one in your hand and get a couple of arrows through it because it definitely holds different, draws different for the year round archer game. I mean, I think I'm in the honeymoon phase right now, so I'm probably hyping it up. For a year round archer, I think, I think it's gonna be tough to beat. 
Well, this is basically, I mean, this is the new version of it, but this is basically the, the same bow I, I spent a good portion of last year hunting with. I hunted with a couple different bows, depending on what I was doing, but like my antelope hunting and my Idaho elk hunting, I actually used a, a, a reckoning, and that's what I hunted with in Idaho mostly. This is totally huntable. It's, yeah, it's 36 inches, but you know, that's not that long. 15 years ago, a short axle to axle bow was 38 inches. And most people use that in, you know, ground blinds, tree stands, spot and stock hunting, you name it. So it's not like it's a really huge bow. A couple inches isn't that big. And if you're going to gain a lot of accuracy over it, it's probably worth it. You know, I'd give it a shot. Target bows are just more accurate. They just are. And if they make something that would qualify as a target bow, but you could still hunt with it, it would at least sake be a really great backup bow, but he might like it so much you want to hunt with it instead of your little shorter hunting bow that you're used to. I've always liked longer bows. I've tried everything under the sun, overall sizes. At one point I was hunting with a 28 inch axle to axle bow and shooting it at hundred yards just to kind of prove they could shoot and they can, but they're so much more squirrely. You got to pay attention to more stuff. So I'm, trying to, to here. I'm going to try, tie on to the axle myself. That's what I like to tie on to. But when you go to set your wheeling, you may end up not having enough room to keep it in there and then have to reassess it. But on a, a, a bow limb that's more forward like this is, I definitely want to tie onto that if I can, which it should be fine. That limb angle is kind of aggressive and that rubber piece might want to move over time. So I'd rather go this route. Part of this is just fun for me to learn because all I've really worked, well, all I've worked on and just seen mostly worked on is Matthew's stuff. So it's nice to see different vendor stuff and to potentially be able to call Josh and be like, hey Josh, my bow's out of time. What do I need to do? And he can be like, oh, just crank that screw. This one is so simple. Yeah, it's crazy. This this specific bow has features that no other bow has ever had before where you can adjust your timing without putting it in a press. That's You don't need to functionally adjust the cable. This little red guy right here. If you loosen that lock screw where my, this fingernail's hitting right there, and then twist that screw, it actually changes the length the post sits at. So you're effectively changing the timing. So you can get this thing to where it's just barely out of time, which most bows are slightly out of time no matter what. It's hard to get away from it completely because like a whole twist will just make it to where it's the other way. That little guy helps you move it a tiny, tiny amount. Pretty freaking awesome. And I'm surprised it took that long for somebody to actually think of that. This system is rock solid and they've been working on it for a while. So with this particular bow, and most bows in the Bowtech line, you can adjust your wheeling with an Allen wrench. On that, you can also adjust your timing. And that's only on the Reckoning 36 and 39. So you just tighten this down. Yeah. I always wonder, you're pulling it till the, the rest is down, right? Yeah, and then I stretch it because these cords stretch like the first 100 to 300 shots you put in them. So I'll tighten it, I'll stretch it, and then it comes up a little bit and then I'll tighten it again. I'll usually do that three or four times before I say, okay, it's okay. It's like you don't quite see it moving anymore. I usually leave a couple inches if I can, just so you can still grab onto it later if you needed to. Maybe time for a new lighter. Yeah. So if you ever need to pull on that, you can grab with a little pair of pliers and get some leverage on it, but don't have a whole bunch hanging out. Yeah, well you gave me a time <laughs> restriction, you son of a bitch. <laughs> I'm all panicked. Hey, as long as you have it done in an hour and a half, I will make the 100 yard shot. Well, we're taking the sight off of there, right? Yep. So our ballistics are gonna be relatively close. Well, that won't be too hard, but still, I mean, you're making me panic. <laughs> what you wanna be on yeah, the other I like side it. of me? Yeah, this is the OMP bow vice, right? Yep. I do have uh, some of the new last chances coming in in about a, two weeks. Pretty excited about those, but we've been using the OMPs for like five years and it's the first vice I've seen that would make me consider changing. So we're gonna get some of those in, test them, do a little review video for you over on Podium Archer YouTube. Like and subscribe. <laughs> that one's pretty unique because it grabs by the handle instead of the limb. Oh, interesting. So like for working on a bow, it's a heck of a lot easier because you can rotate it. And it doesn't move so easily because when you're leveraging on one end, everything moves a lot easier. So you can still set it for level. You can still position it to where you can grab onto it here. And they made a couple different sets of jaws for it. I want to say they even made one specific for like a AR platform. If So you're, you can use it for other stuff. It doesn't have to just be a bow vise. See a lot of these different bows get shot right out of the gate. How does Bowtech do for like a typical starting place as far as for tune. They're usually the straightest, squarest bow right out of the gate, largely because they're engineered and designed around your cams being straight at full draw and your riser being 13 16 off the riser. There are three straight cables. There's no splits, there's no yokes. It's just basically three bow strings, super simple. Um, everything about their product and how it's designed and whatnot is why if you followed me for several years, you will see that I use Bowtech a lot. I think they're 
they've got some really good features. I am all about trying to make it easier for you to be able to work on your own stuff. And this is by far the easiest bow to work on yourself. Any extra parts, nothing, it's just simple. Man, I really need another lighter. This is costing me time, Tim. <laughs> I've seen it can go bows. really fast or it can go really slow. I've seen you tune bows. Well, yeah, but sometimes, well, it's not likely to happen with this, but sometimes it can turn into a, a shit show. And sometimes it's really simple and easy. This guy made by the rock. Little distillery little in his basement. Drink. Little, little energy, energy drink, drink distillery in his basement. Totally. Yeah. yeah. They're pretty Slash. good, man. I like them. I like my I like my caffeine in, a, in the form of a coffee. Myself. Coffee's hard to beat. And I know it's Guys, Josh almost three o'clock. Josh is hashtag not sponsored. But if he had one sponsor, he would like it to be Yeti. Yeti. <laughs> I'm a fan. Um, but yeah, no, I don't I don't have sponsors. I won't take money. You sponsor you. I sponsor me. And you help sponsor me by buying products off my website and in the store, which helps make me money to where I don't need to have a sponsor to be able to functionally do what we're doing, which is why I can remain the most unbiased person out there because I don't have to answer to anybody. Oh, loop pliers. There we go. Hope you are ready. Put an arrow through paper because we're going to do that here pretty quick. Oh, wow. Yep. Well, if I'm on a deadline, <laughs> then uh, we're going to jump through a couple of hoops to see if... So if you, you can go through and check... The deadline. Well, you can go through and check your wheeling and go through and check your timing, but if you put an arrow through paper and you know what you're doing to start with, i.e. your rest is at the right height and the correct position off the riser, you can shoot it through paper, and if you get a hole, those things are set correctly, so you don't have to go check them. If you don't get a hole, then, okay, which one of these things is off, and go from there. And oh. we are darn near ready to shoot this through paper. Nice. I'm going to go get my release. It my release. Time. Uh, Got it? Got it. Got arrows? Got arrows. Okay. Hold that for a sec. My baby. Put that out my the new way. baby. This is new. Uh, this is the one from down at the shop because my uh, my prototype still isn't done. I'm trying to make one that, um, uh, no, different guy that makes my answers, but the same guy that's making my fletching jig. That's a secret. Secret time. <laughs> we can share a secret. And yeah, don't worry, it won't just be hard right helical three fletch. Might even do four. <laughs> Set an arrow through here. I'm gonna take All right, so this is first arrow out of this bow. Haven't checked timing, haven't checked wheeling because somebody got cute and said I needed to have it on a time restraint. <laughs> so we're gonna skip a couple steps and see if we get lucky and it's already wheeling set and time. My guess would be no, but we'll find out real quick. Oh, okay, surprise. Oh God, there we go. You're all right. I think you're okay. Oh, look at that. <laughs> what? Sweet. Just saved me like 20 minutes. <laughs> Is that an actual bullet hole? Yeah, it's pretty damn close. You could, uh, I think, so. I think the draw length needs to be longer. That's fine. We can change that. That's easy enough. It won't change that, but. It won't change tune? Nope. Okay. All right here, take this back. You're cutting into my time. <laughs> uh, we're 24 minutes in. Dude. That's, that's pretty good, dude. No, it's not. It's not? No. Oh, I thought it was really good. No, you're making me run camera and stuff? Where's my Allen wrench? Damn it. Yeah, so we're sliding that baby out. We're going to use this. That thing is quite nice. And I'm going to use that bow to put a couple other sights on to test for you guys. Couple, but, because, couple but because it's not a Matthews, we got to take this bracket back out. We don't need that doohickey. We don't, we don't need the bridge lock bracket because it's not going on a Matthews. That's what I was thinking about and that. And bridge locking. Hey, Josh. Yeah, buddy. Have you heard about the guy that uh, dipped his balls in glitter? <laughs> I don't know if I want to have heard about the guy who dipped his balls in glitter, but go ahead. Pretty nuts. <laughs> Is that what you put on your like on your Instagram there? Yeah, I did. Check out these pretty nuts. Yeah, pretty yeah. nuts. Pretty nuts. Pretty nuts. It's funny. Yeah, <laughs> it is pretty, funny. That's pretty good. It's funny because it's the kid who delivers it, and his timing is perfect. Yeah, uh, impeccable timing. And his dad is like got the best laugh. It's just they have a great shtick. Pretty nuts. Pretty nuts. Who's nuts? These nuts. All right, I'm just gonna level on here. This thing's got raw sex appeal. That's awful far away from the riser for you. I know what's uh, what's might be right for me might not be right for everybody, you know. <laughs> you 
Man, so you already got four fledged arrows. I might as well just <laughs> just take an average and go with that. Yeah. Lovely, lovely. The rail's off a little bit. Yeah, well, yeah, I just unbolted it and rebolted it. It's going to be off. Oh, I got you. I had to disconnect it. So the adjustment thing mm -hmm. that holds it level, and plus bow to bow, it's not necessarily going to be the same anyway. Bubble to rail is still the same, so you're good. So we're level. We're square. Did you want that again? No, no you're no? good. Okay. Yep. So that's good. That's good. Tuned. We put a peep in it, put a stabilizer on it, put a V-bar on it, and change the draw length a half an inch longer. So let's well, do that real quick. What are we quick. gonna do with all of our extra time? Sit around. Watch you miss. Sit around. <laughs> <laughs> sit around and drink beer. Well, I wouldn't mind. Screws are on this side. It's probably easier if I lay this down flat to do this. We are giving you a half an inch, buddy. So apparently you felt like you needed another half inch. That needs another piece of wood. That'll take a good size piece. We should be able to leave it alone for after that. If you haven't had a tour of Josh's man cave yet, what you have a name for this spot? Man cave. Man cave That's studio. Little. This is where he does all of his filming. But the workbench, firewood, all of these cool animals collected through the years. And what I like most is probably some of this old old archery stuff, trad stuff. I have a soft spot for. I'm gonna. I'm definitely gonna go through like a recurve or a trad phase or something, just a little <laughs> bit. It's fun to watch those arrows fly. Guys, Josh is kind of thinking about a podcast, and I like podcasts, but I, I know they're a pretty big commitment. So, what do you think about Josh starting a podcast? And then, how many episodes would be a fair test run? And then, should I co-host it with Josh? Well, there you go. That's not a bad idea. Should I do a hostile takeover? Well, yeah, Tim told me that I shouldn't put it on my YouTube channel. Originally, that was my Fireside Chats idea, and Tim texts me after I put that out, and he goes, hey, that's called a podcast. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give it a whirl. I mean, I think there'd be some definite uh, advantage to Tim being involved there, which, by the way, this is the first time he mentioned it at all of uh, that, and I think that's a great idea. <laughs> I, like Tim, do, I, like do, that, I like to do stuff like that. He likes camera. to keep me on my toes. Man. Yeah. I think he, uh, he authentically wants to see my authentic reaction to what he says without having the opportunity to process or digest it before he shoves that Sony thing in my face yeah. that you all enjoy watching, so... That'll be a good time. I'd like to do that. Yeah. If, not, if nothing else, I'll definitely record with them at some point. I still think I want to call it the Fireside Chats. Comment down below. Is that a terrible name? <laughs> Should I call it something else? So we like that? We got that extra half inch. Let's set a peep in it, and I'll have you pull it back again. And we'll tie a peep in place whilst checking your length, you know, because we're trying to shave time here. Because somebody had a really cute idea. Where are we at? 34 minutes. <gasps> Should have been done four minutes ago. I'm gonna need you to pull that back again and we're gonna have to adjust your peep heights. And just up or down. Down, or down, a half an inch. Down. And a smaller peep or a, or a closer sight. That, that's pretty close. That's pretty close? Okay, go ahead and set it down. Yeah, but I got a hot dog down the hallway. <laughs> you really shouldn't share that information with people, Tim. <laughs> That's something you avoid telling people. <laughs> there you go. So in the hot dog down the hallway situation, we bring the sight in closer or go to a smaller peep. Okay, well, let me go grab a smaller one because that was not smaller. Guys, look at a, let me see if I can catch him leaving here. See Josh out there? This is his mode of transportation. He mobs in a golf cart, a souped up golf cart at that. He's back. Uh, 732 and we're going down to 316. Just good old fashioned beeswax. One twist. So we land sideways. Put one twist in it. One this twist be, in the bottom cam? Yeah, always the bottom, don't do the top. All right, I'll move our loop. Give it another good cinch. And that should be golden. Can throw some stabilizers on it, get you a 20 yard impact, readjust your points on the site, and see if we can hit something at 100 yards. And I wasn't even prepared for this. Let's get our 10 degree down first. He's putting a little 10 degree doohickey down mm -hmm. angle on there. A little drop angle for you. There's some mad scientist stuff there. Changes your, changes the bow roll. Supposedly holds where's a little our, bit better. Where's the V-bar that we grab? You're shoot at that, but I'm gonna have you shoot from like right here first. Yeah, I was gonna see say. where we're hitting. Okay, let's do it. Um, so grab your arrow on the bow. 
Probably not terribly far off. It's left, but not terrible. So go ahead and shoot it, and I'll mm -hmm. adjust it. That feel better? Yeah. Am I on the target? Oh yeah, you're you're close. It's just how far off we are at this distance. Okay, that's good. That means we can move the sight head down, and you hit right. So left, to right's pretty damn close. It's not so far off. Yeah. So I think we're safe to. Uh, we'll drop your head down. Probably not much, just because at this distance. Let's go ahead and just back all the way up to it that we can in here. We only have about 15 yards in here, folks. Little right, little low, that's okay. I'm gonna give you a little bump and then we can run down there and use the actual bales and I'll grab that V-bar. We're, we're in the ballpark. After I make this movement, your bow's built as far as the time it took to build your bow. That looks better. It looks square to me. All right, let's round our stuff up, jump in the golf cart and drive down to the range. To the back cave? Yeah, buddy. And we're about to head down to the range. Hang on, baby Jesus, this is about to get bumpy. <laughs> to the range, to the world famous moose. Let's go. Guys, what do you think about Josh's ride here, guys? This is how he rolls. Moose, balloon. Mr. Moose. Oh, it's not too muddy, we don't nah, get stuck here. Nah. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm gonna get out of here for a second. Our best visual, probably yellow, huh? I would I like think yellow. so, yellow's gonna show up better. I wanna make sure we can see it okay. I'll it is windy, give me a little bit of grace. Yeah, well, I'll give you something. We're filming all this in less than two hours too. I mean, 100%. We're, we're getting you guys the shots. Yeah. Why do you think I was panicking? <laughs> Target cam, we're pinned. All right. Let's go make that shot, dude. This is hectic. This is chaotic. This is way more than 100 here. 53 minutes to make the shot, and it is blowing out here. All of a sudden, I got a little nervous. Ah, oh, you're fine. You got lots of arrows in that quiver. We'll be all right. Ain't that far. Let's let it rip, tater chip. Should I spot with my binos the first one and not film you on the first one so I know where you're hitting? No. Okay. Now, with your expertise and my fine shooting ability, I appreciate the confidence, but we should probably spot this arrow. <laughs> this is probably going to hit the target. I'm guessing, man. There's a lot of guessing involved here. Oh, you <laughs> nicked it! <laughs> oh, you so nicked it. I don't, hopefully you can see that on Dude, that. that. There's an or orange dot sitting right next to the frame. That could have hit... The way it's wagging, yeah. that could have hit. I know. The wind moved right. Hang on, hang on. Dude, you bumped it. That was dope. I was like, please, God, just hit the target somewhere. Ladies and gentlemen, that was authentically the first arrow. Where, that, yeah, where it is time. right now, would've, it would have yeah, hit. Yeah, if the wind was sitting right, you'd have hit it. But it's windy AF out here. Look at that balloon dancing all over the place. That's right. Yep. Well, that's the direction the wind's blowing too. So make sure you're holding left because this wind, it's, it's going to move your arrow. Okay. It's a good call. Fuck. <laughs> I was right there. <laughs> I gotta hold left. Uh, yeah, hold should left. I, should I move my sight? Well, if you want to, but I'd just hold left. I'll move my sight. Okay, move your sight. Remember, we really didn't sight this in. You shot like two arrows at 20 and said, yeah, I'm close. If you're an inch off at 20, you're a foot off out here. So I like moving probably the sight. more than two clicks if you're moving for clicks. I did four. Yeah, it's probably more than that, but it's all right. You've got two arrows, like not counting that middle one. Like two of your three are three inches apart in the freaking 10 ring. I know, it's actually, one arrow's actually behind the balloon. Yeah. How's that? In under two hours from hitting at 100 yards. Dude, you got three out of four like that. <laughs> Move it left, son. <laughs> like 10 clicks. 10 or whatever. It's recording? Uh, been recording the whole time unless you turned it off. I didn't touch nothing. It says record, we're all right. Cause this one's gonna hit, dude. 
I wouldn't doubt it. Aiming at a wobbling balloon. Yeah, you gotta like ignore the balloon. Yeah, you do. Honestly. You do. Just hold your pin and just stop trying to hit the balloon while it moves. Just hold your pin. I'm doing good. Just don't hit the FedEx guy. That's way right. You should move in your sight right, dude. Oh yeah, I moved it left. So like 20 right, and I said, that was like a solid shot and you moved it about as much as we were trying to move it. That's a rookie move. Well, you know, you're, you, you said you were nervous. <laughs> Here you That's go. what happens when you scramble. Move the sight the wrong way, will do it. God, that broke right on there. Yeah, you've got a great left to right group, which indicates moving your sight around. Our height's money. Like that, that distance is a hundo, guaranteed. I twist to the right to move my sight to the right on X. I think so. You do. Yeah. God, these have all felt so good. Right? Except for the one, that one, that one. Yeah, you had a wonky one in yeah. there. I mean, come on, it's like the ninth arrow you've shot out of this bow. <laughs> Ooh, that's just right. Height's good, man. Your height's solid. Now do it. <laughs> if it's freaking dead on, I'm gonna be like. Wouldn't that be just hilarious? I don't think I'm that good. That's, I don't know, man. I've seen you sight a couple of my bows and right on 20. Yeah, well, we're like five times that far, Tim. All right, let's get it, dude. That's good. Oh, I was so Did close. you see the balloon move? Yeah, he moved the balloon. <laughs> I think I, I guess Are you holding on the balloon? Yeah. Okay, dude, you're like three clicks, Max. Just make sure you're moving them right. I want four. Two thirds of those arrows are you moving the sight the wrong way. <laughs> this is a four flat, so it should hit. <laughs> Get that garbage <laughs> out of here. <laughs> Have you been sandbagging this whole time just so you could hit one with a four fletch? That's messed up. Oh, look at that bloom moving like crazy. That dropped out low. It did. Might there be more drag on that four fletch there, Tim? God. That wasn't a bad <laughs> That's bad <hilarious>. shot. <laughs> that, are the rest, were all the other ones three fletch? Because you got a great group. The irony of that is Actually, just my other priceless. shit shot might be the four fletch. Yeah, the, the, this is priceless. <laughs> Oh, God, that's right above it. Where did that hit? That's like the top of the balloon. <laughs> like you can see oh. it. It's, right, it's barely in the back, that was high. See the see the orange dot yeah. now that the balloon moved down? You see it oh, in the high. back? See so right. when the balloon's up, you'd have nicked it? Yeah. It's like touching it now. You've almost got it pinned in there. All right. I knew, Money. Dude, I knew that when that, that left. How much time we got left? Good call, dude. Dude. That, that is the world record bow build 100 yard shot. Break it. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna give you a bath later. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, that's what we got. Zero to 100. Subscribe to the channel. We're on the road to 100K. Go check out Josh's channel. Thank you so much, Josh, for building this bow. Couldn't have done it without him. Guys, that's the 100 yard shot. Hour, a little less than an hour, 20 minutes. We'll catch you back for the next one. Dude, that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good group for Oh, so make sure you get those ones that are way down low that are four fletch. They're hitting way lower. Imagine that. Imagine that. Food for thought. And there's gonna be 17 comments down below of, well, but they're heavier, so it's gonna, and it's not really drag, and whatever. 
All right. <laughs> that is honestly really impressive in that wind, Tim, for a bow that you shot. How many arrows are in your hand there? 11 arrows. Watch out, ladies and gentlemen. He's coming for you. No tack is safe. No tack is safe. In 2023. Yeah.